Hello dear students, this is the second part of lecture number two entitled Richard Hoggart for the Cultural Studies course of level seven. Schoolmaster and this headmaster helped him to get a scholarship for further education at a grammar school which is, according to the British educational system, a high-ranking type of school. He finished his school education and again, due to outstanding performance, got another scholarship, this time a scholarship for university education at the University of Leeds. He graduated with a first class degree at the University of Leeds. And when the Second World War began, he served in the war in the Royal Artillery. Of course, all these real world experience, his working class background, his family members who, although poor, knew the value of a good education, getting in contact with good teachers and encouraging headmasters, serving his country in the war, all these experiences helped shape his outlook or his worldview. Throughout his long life, he lived almost 96 years, from 1918 till 2014, which means his lifetime extended across the whole of the 20th century and a good part of the first two decades of the 21st century. Throughout his life, Hoggart harbored deep respect for the value of a good education and deep respect for the values and the culture of working class families. They may be poor when we talk about finance, but they do understand the good value of an education and they want to get social upward mobility for their children whenever they can do this. Later on, he will work at different teaching professions and he will work in journalism and he will get in contact with the new mid 20th century media in the form of radio, television, newspaper, and all this will influence the way he was thinking about culture. Culture to him was no longer just the popular culture of the working class. He started seeing new forms of culture invading his society and threatening to destroy the popular culture he so liked. He was influenced by Marxist philosophy. And as we mentioned before in the first part of the lecture, Marxism focuses on working class welfare. It highlights the fact that working classes are oppressed by the ruling class. And it also highlights the fact that this condition can easily be changed. It doesn't have to be fixed or permanent. There is always the potential and the opportunity for working class members to rise above their classes. Hoggart himself, as we have seen, 
is a living example of that. From the son of a poor working class family to a university professor and a journalist and the, the, the director of the Center of Contemporary Cultural Studies and an author and intellectual in the wider sense of the word. So what he saw in his real life experience was like additional proof or evidence that Marxism does deliver and that it is like the appropriate sort of philosophy to be adopted by someone like him. And not just on an individual basis, but on the basis of general welfare of British working classes. In the coming slide, we are going to talk more about one of the major life works of Hoggart. He established a whole university center that was the first of its kind all over the world, and that was highly influential in spreading the study of this new discipline known as cultural studies. And we will also talk a bit more about Marxism and how it influenced Hoggart as well as other foundational figures in British cultural studies. The center established by Hoggart was founded in 1964 at the Birmingham University and its full name is the Center of Contemporary Cultural Studies. As you can see, the name is very telling and it directly applies to the main function and activity of this center. You remember in lecture one, when we were talking about the definition of cultural studies and how it focuses on contemporary culture, but it also studies the historical foundations of this contemporary culture, the possible alternatives or contingencies that might have arisen, and why did they arise or not arise, and so on. So this center is the embodiment of the definition that we have studied in lecture one. Many of the cultural studies scholars who worked at this center employed Marxist methods of analysis. They explored the relationships between cultural forms and political economy. This is very important. If you are a Marxist, you would be visualizing society or culture in general as a superstructure and a base. The superstructure is the cultural forms, for example, literature, religion, singing, music, dancing, the theater, opera, the movies, newspapers, media in general, all these would be part of the superstructure according to Marxism. Then there is the base. The base is that of political economy. It has the workers and the businessmen who employ the workers. So this base can have all the classes together, the employers and the employees, the rich and the poor, the factory owner and the worker who works at the factory. So Marxism cares about the relations between this super, sometimes it's called supra or superstructure, and the base. And since most of the cultural critics in Britain and especially in the Center of Contemporary Cultural Studies, Birmingham University, had Marxist affiliation, including Hoggart and also including Raymond Williams, who will be the subject of another lecture in our course. 
because of their Marxism, they used Marxist <coughs> Thus, the cultural critics who worked at the center, because they all had they all had Marxist affiliations, so they were following the Marxist methods, as we said, in analyzing culture. And again, let me repeat and underline how they were interested on examining and exploring the relationship between what we call the cultural forms or the superstructure and the forms of political economy or the base. There is another influence that must be mentioned in the context of this center. This influence came from France in the 1970s through the work of the French Marxist Louis Althusser. We are going to have a separate lecture discussing Louis Althusser, but right now, when we are talking about the Center of Contemporary Cultural Studies at Birmingham University, we must mention that Althusser and his work and the, 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 the modifications that he uh, supplied to some of the Marxist terminology and, and analysis, this work was prevalent and very influential all over the world, wherever there were Marxists, and many of the Marxists, including those at Birmingham, they adopted Althusserian techniques and Althusserian terminology that we will talk about later. So by now we have finished Richard Hoggart's contribution as a founder of the discipline of cultural studies, as a working class intellectual, as a Marxist, and as the author of influential books such as The Uses of Literacy and The Way We Live. Now, and we also mentioned part of his legacy, which is this center. And the center, by the way, was closed in 2002, but it had established many important principles that were used by other similar centers uh, in other universities all over the world. Before we come to the end of this lecture, I want to point your, your attention to uh, the word popular. Whenever Hoggart is mentioned, the word popular, and especially in relation to popular culture, comes to mind. So I need just to emphasize to you that this word, actually, you all know it by another meaning, the meaning of something being liked or favored or admired or approved of, such as if you say about someone that this singer, for example, is one of the most popular singers in Egypt, for example. So the word popular here will be having the meaning of well-liked or admired or beloved by people or so on. But when we use the word popular in the context of cultural studies, in the context, in the context of uh, um, Hogarth and his work, we mean actually, when we describe, suppose we say that uh, uh, this cultural activity or this cultural product is popular. It means that it is suited to the taste, the understanding, the means of the general public, rather than the specialists or the elite. When you say, like, 
uh, this book belongs to popular fiction. Popular fiction would be like something that would attract the general readership. They don't have to be highly sophisticated or uh, uh, um, having doctorate degrees or things like that. For example, maybe we can say that most of the works of Agatha Christie, the detective fiction of Agatha Christie, belongs to the genre of popular fiction. So again, here the word popular, it, it doesn't just mean well-liked or admired, which is the first meaning, but it means a different thing. It means like you don't have to be highly educated in order to appreciate a book by Agatha Christie. You don't have to be a, a sophisticated or an intellectual or anything. Maybe you are a working class. Maybe you are just a, one member of the general public. There is nothing special about you, but this work would appeal to you. So actually, I want you to keep in mind the two meanings of uh, popular because sometimes we use popular in one of these two meanings either as something which is well liked if you say Fulan is the most popular student in our class so it means like almost everybody likes this person like if we are going to uh, 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 vote or uh, to elect a president of our class we will choose him or the majority will, cho will choose him and popular, in the other sense, it's like what we call in the Arabic translation, shabi. And shabi here would mean you don't have to be very uh, highly educated in order to like it or appreciate it. Like what I told you about detective fiction, this genre of detective fiction usually is not considered to be a very academic genre. Rather, it is considered to be a popular literary genre. So, let me wish you all the best of luck and thank you.